Hello again. <clears throat> I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website, which is eight self improvement lessons that I've learned from being a family systems therapist for 31 years and observing the planet for over 70 years. Lesson two in this website is about improving your communication, which I've had a special interest in for over 40 years. I want to offer in this video uh, some important aspects of the universal requisite for all of us for listening. Um, I want to ask you, uh, to begin, I want to ask you, how empathic are you? Do you know what empathic means? And if so, on a scale of 1 to 10, how empathic would others who know you say you are? I'll explain in a minute why I'm asking you this. A related question is, on another scale of 1 to 10, how effective, as opposed to good, how effective a listener are you generally with most people, 1 to 10? What would other people say about you? What would you say about yourself? This, in, this video will offer you some insight into both these questions. I want to uh, propose that, I'm sure you know, that effective listening is a requisite, an essential requisite for effective communication and satisfying relationships. Listening is important. Um, in my experience as a therapist and a person, a high percentage of normal average people don't know how to listen. See if that applies to you. Let me suggest, um, as we start, that there is a difference between hearing and listening. Would you agree? Hearing is something that goes on up here. You hear with your mind and you make intellectual sense out of whatever words you hear. It's a mental activity. Listening is a whole, a whole body experience that uses your eyes, your ears, your nose, and your sense to get a, a feeling for what is this other person trying to communicate to me. There's a big difference between hearing and listening. Which do you usually do with important people in important situations? Do you know? Um, let me touch first on what is empathy and why is it important. Empathy is the ability to sense fully what another person is thinking, feeling, and needing at the moment and over time. Does that agree with your definition? Would you also agree that some people are better at empathizing than others? Um, the reason I am focusing on this right now is effective listening as opposed to hearing requires that you be empathic. I want to credit Stephen Covey, the author of Seven Secrets of Highly Effective People, I think that's the title of his book, for this term. He uses the term empathic listening, which I gratefully uh, adopt. I think that's a very expressive way, appropriate way of defining this skill. Empathic listening is a learned skill. Uh, it's one of seven that you'll find in Lesson 2 in my nonprofit website. Um, how do you do empathic listening? Can you answer that question? Many people cannot. Now, by the way, empathic listening is the same as something that's been around for a long time. This is not a new idea. It has been called in the past um, active listening because you don't just sit and nod and grunt. You are active as you listen. It's also been called mirroring because in effect what you do, like a mirror, you give back to the speaker 
no more and no less than you receive. You just give it right back to them. So empathic listening, mirroring, and active listening are all the same thing. How do you do it? It starts with, in my opinion, putting your true self in charge of your personality. If you don't know what that is, see lesson one in my website and the related YouTube videos. The reason I propose this is, if you are ruled by a false self, it will be difficult for you to empathize with important people who are trying to communicate with you. True selves are best at empathizing. Another requisite besides your true self in charge that you need is feeling undistracted. In order to listen empathically, you need to put aside other concerns, focus on the other person that you're with for one minute, 12 minutes, an hour and a quarter, whatever. But you need to focus and minimize distractions. They need to minimize distractions also. Uh, so this is a two-person deal. The next requisite you need to be a good empathic listener is awareness. It's the first of seven essential communication skills. There are a group of things you need to learn to be aware of. In this case, for our purposes, what you need to train yourself to do and become habitual at is noticing without judgment and with equal respect what is my partner feeling, thinking, doing, and needing. Trained therapists do that as a matter of course. Many people are not used to doing that by themselves. Um, so, in order to be a truly effective leader, uh, a listener, and get a strong 10 from people who rate your listening ability, cultivate your awareness of other people's traits, like I just outlined. Okay? Um, as you engage in a communication process with someone, and I'm focusing on important communications as opposed to average or whole hum. If you're talking about something that is probably going to affect your self-esteem, your security, or your relationship quality, use awareness, focus on your other person, avoid distractions, and from time to time, when they take a breath or pause, say back to them your impression of what they think, feel, and need. Do that ideally in one sentence or even a phrase, part of a sentence. That could sound like, you're feeling really worried about uh, the tax return you just submitted. Notice that's not a question, that's a statement. What you're doing, in effect, is reporting back to the speaker what you observe. You're not commenting, you're not questioning, you're not uh, bringing up old stuff, you're not saying, that reminds me, or I know how that feels. None of those things apply to empathic listening. Simply report back what you see, feel, and sense about your partner at this moment and over time. Then stop, be quiet, and use these beautiful instruments and watch and listen to see what your partner does. If your empathic listening is successful, they will do something like, yeah, and, or, well, yes, and let me tell you some more. They'll continue talking and they'll affirm, either nonverbally or verbally, that you're on the mark. If you are not on the mark, and if they're thinking, feeling, or doing something different than what you just reported, and say, no, really what I meant is, the benefit of that is, both of you get clearer. So the good thing about empathic listening skill is, it's win-win. You can't lose, if you mean it genuinely, instead of some kind of manipulation. So say back to your partner, periodically, what you believe they think, 
feel, and need than be quiet and observe their reaction. You can use this uh, proactively with other people in what I call a hearing check. One of the common things that people don't know they could use to improve their communication effectiveness is in important situations with important people periodically say back to them what you think they say feel and need and watch that's called a hearing check that validates that you are hearing them clearly if you are saying something important and you're not sure if your partner is taking in what you feel think and need ask for a hearing check what a concept <clears throat> That might sound like, so, uh, Jose, you, you get that I'm unhappy about this. Can you say back your opinion about why? What have you just heard me say? Could you tell me? Some people who are insecure will receive a request like that as an attack or an inference, like you think they're stupid or they're not listening. That's a sign that they're probably psychologically wounded, which is a whole other topic and the subject of another video uh, and lesson one in my website. So, let me try and recap. A powerful skill and relationship uh, asset that you can cultivate is called empathic listening, thanks to Stephen Covey. The essence of it is saying back to your partner after you observe them without judgment after you observe them, say back periodically what you think they say, what they just said, what they're feeling, and what they need. <clears throat> then stop and listen and watch and see what they do. I cannot empathize, uh, emphasize enough. Using empathic listening is not, not agreeing. Some people may assume if you use hearing checks that you are agreeing with what they're saying. Not true. You may or may not agree. Also, stay aware, you can use empathic listening for 12 seconds. You can use it for an hour. It does not mean you don't have the right to your own opinions and you can't say back a response to the other person. It simply means you respect them and you want to hear them with your heart, as Stephen Covey says. Try this out and see what you get. Now, revisit the question. Are you a good listener, one to 10? Do you use this skill already? If not, think of the most difficult, obnoxious people <clears throat> that you relate to. Imagine what would happen <clears throat> if you use this skill. By the way, uh, using a, use a, Using empathic listening <clears throat> is half of being an effective asserter. You need this skill in order to be an effective at getting other people to hear your needs, opinions, uh, and wants. Um, enjoy studying the Lesson 2 videos and Lesson 2 itself and improving the effectiveness of your communication and your relationships.